Hello everyone and welcome to my bar. My name is Ansel Birch, the Indecisionist, and I will be your dungeon barkeep today. Now, I am no expert mixologist, but like anyone tending bar in a cave, I have an adventurous spirit and a willingness to try anything once. So what do you say? If you're interested, I, you know, I don't have a menu or a call list or anything, but I do want to make you a cocktail. So I'll roll some gaming dice and whatever they tell me, I will put together. And I'll taste it first before I ever recommend it to you. What do you say? Sound fair? Great. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Uh, I've got this set of gaming dice here. So let's go ahead and start by choosing what we're going to put in. So we've got to choose an essential from this chart. Uh, what, do you, what, what do we want? A liqueur, a cream, a mixer, a juice, uh, maybe just extra liquor. Uh, so let's go ahead and roll a d4 and see what we get. That is a four. So we're going to go double liquor on this one. Okay, great, great, great. But, but what garnish do we want to put with our double liquor? six bitters all right liquor and bitters this is gonna be a classic old-fashioned i'm excited this should be great uh so we're gonna go ahead and move on to the liquors chart that's decided by a d10 that's a three whiskey oh we really are just making an old-fashioned aren't we okay i'm not mad about that and uh, just to prove that I do have a chance of making a decent cocktail here, let's let's give me a brief pop quiz here on the bar terms chart. That's an 11 for neat. Uh, serving something neat is, um, uh, you know, when you just put the liquor in a glass and call it a day. Uh, we're not going to do that today because we are going to be uh, adding a couple things to our cocktail, but that is what neat means. And we did have a second liquor, so let's go back to the liquor chart and roll this again. So we've got whiskey and bitters, and we're going to add absinthe. Okay, so this will be an improved old-fashioned by most standards uh, whenever you put absinthe into a cocktail. My understanding is that you can usually call that an improved X cocktail. So we're going to do whiskey, absinthe, bitters, and that's it. So it is close to being a neat cocktail. Uh, yeah, so what are we going to call that? So we have here a list of names that were suggested by folks online, folks just like you. Uh, and you too can add names to this list by heading over to indecisionist.com slash dungeon barkeep, where there is a form linked for you to submit names to be uh, included on the list. So uh, here we have a selection and let's roll a d20 to see what we're going to pick from it. 18, the Dread Pirate Roberts. Interesting. Okay, an improved old-fashioned called the Dread Pirate Roberts. I can get behind that. That feels um, feels appropriate to the character. So all that's left is to go ahead and put this together. So let's head on over to the bar top cam and do just that. There we go. We're going to need some D6s of cold damage. I'm going to go ahead and do a nice heavy dose of our bitters. So... We're going to call that like, I don't know, probably a bar spoon worth of bitters. Next up, I am going to head and using some Johnny Walker Red as our whiskey. This is technically a scotch whiskey. And I say technically, it says it right on the label. This is a scotch whiskey. But I think it's going to have enough character to... Uh, really stand out against the absinthe as well as being a little bit more in keeping with the dread pirate roberts concept so we'll do two ounces of blended scotch and now for our absinthe we're going to use just uh man Yeah, I don't want to completely overwhelm all of this. So we're going to go ahead and do a bar spoon of absinthe as well. Just so as not to completely overwhelm the cocktail. A little absinthe goes a long way. And that's it, the Dread Pirate Roberts. But how does it taste? Mm. 
Well, I'll tell you, it's bitter. And that's to be expected. Because what we've done here is we've made an old fashioned, but we've left out the sugar. Usually an old fashioned wants, uh, wants some simple syrup. And I think that that's really gonna make a big difference here. So I'm gonna go ahead and make an executive decision and add a couple bar spoons of simple just to offset some of that absinthe whiskey bitterness. So let's try that again. Okay, now we've got something. The whiskey is bringing a strong flavor to the, or the scotch, I should say, is bringing a strong flavor to the party. It's got a little bit of smokiness, just a little bit of peatiness. This is a Johnny Walker Red, so there's not like a huge amount going on, but it's still a, a decent base level scotch to put in stuff. It's great for mixing in that regard. Um, the bitters are definitely bringing their all to the party. Uh, the the amount of bitters that I put in there, again, about a bar spoonful, um, really has helped them to punch through and create a space for themselves. Uh, and that's really the important thing with, with something like this, where the bitters need to do some lifting as opposed to just opening up a flavor. Um, if you want the bitters to be present like that, you really do have to use more than you would usually be um, inclined to do. And in this case, I think it's made a huge difference. Uh, and then on top of that, the, the, um, the absinthe is because we just used a little bit because it was just like a bar spoon ish, um, going in here that, that flavor is present. It's, uh, making itself known. Obviously absinthe is a, a very, forward flavor and it's it's hard to miss if you put any amount in anything to the point where you can like spray you can use an atomizer and just spray a mist of it on something and get it, an enormous impact from it um so i think that a bar spoon ish uh, of uh, absinthe was the right call to go with the two ounces of, of scotch that we did here um could it use some refinement? Sure. I, I could see absolutely spending some time with this and really dialing it in to the way that you want it to be. But for, for my purposes and for this being an initial blind go, I think the balance is decent. Um, you know, you could go a hair one way or another and still still be in, in the same ballpark. But um, I would I would absolutely drink this again. Again, I, I don't think we're doing anything particularly groundbreaking here with the Dread Pirate Roberts. This is really just an improved old fashioned. Um, but I think generally with an improved old fashioned, the technique is a little different. And the main thing is you're going to you're going to uh, rinse the glass with absinthe, which means you're going to put like just a sploosh of absinthe in the bottom of the glass, swirl it around, dump out the excess into your face if you're me. And, uh, and then you're going to build your old fashioned in that glass. So it's such a tiny amount of absinthe that it allows the whiskey to really take more presence. By using a scotch, though, we've kind of overcome that need. Um, so I think that a, a scotch old fashioned with, with uh, the amount of absinthe that I went with is, is worth trying if you're into that sort of thing. If you like a spirit forward, um, aggressively flavorful um, anise hit in your cocktail, this is definitely worth uh, giving a shot. So now the question is, so where does this belong in an adventure? <sighs> Everywhere. <laughs> this is really nice. I think this is the cocktail that your adventurers get when they arrive in a place that is safe. Uh, and so I would like to put this into a, like a halfling village where, um, you know, you want to communicate to the heroes that they've arrived in a place where the locals are relatively safe. There's not like a huge danger 
Um, they're in a maybe in a waypoint along the route of their adventure. Uh, this isn't where the main bad guy is. Or maybe you want to lull them into a false sense of security. Um, this is the sort of thing that you're going to drink with the local mayor who's going to give you information for your next leg of the voyage. Um, someone who has their... Um, who has their stuff together and is able to give your heroes reliable, useful information that they are going to be able to take to the bank. The sort of th this is an adventure moment that they should take notes on because you're going to drop important names. That's what this cocktail is for. It's for giving them the the hint that you know whatever is happening here is is you can take it to the bank. It's relevant to the plot. Write down those names. Make a note of the locations that they're talking about. Um, if they drop a hint that somebody is is maybe not on the level, you can you can write that down. Put that in your notes. Make sure that you check in on that person because chances are pretty good the person who told you, the mayor or whatever, uh, knows their stuff. Um, so yeah, that is that is where I would put this in an adventure. Um, Again, it's an improved old-fashioned, so you can go get this at a bar right now. You could go ask for an improved old-fashioned. Uh, the bartender should know what you mean. Um, certainly, if you explain it, you'll be able to get it. But um, uh, And maybe you can make it at home. So if you do taste it, let me know how you like it. And regardless, where would you put it in your adventures? What? Where does this belong in your campaign? Do you have a like fun wizard who in, entertains the adventurers in their sitting room? Do you have a, a like a, an interesting interdimensional demon who welcomes them into uh, into a, a extra dimensional comfy lounge where they uh, enjoy cocktails and talk about things from beyond the mortal pale? Tell me about it. I would love to hear about your adventure location and who are the like reliable adventure who are the reliable information uh sources that are uh, in your adventure i think that there's a lot of uh a lot of importance on those characters and we maybe don't appreciate them enough as as dms because we we really want to lean in on the characters who you know are you know a bigger threat or more dangerous or you know you have to spend three hours trying to defeat um, those are, you know, those are characters that get a lot of play, but these, these side characters, the patricians and mayors and what have you, um, they're important. And I, I, I think that this is a good drink to feature those characters. But all that being said, it's really up to you, friends at home. What did you think? Uh, do you want to use this? Like, comment, subscribe, tell me what you're thinking, uh, and support the channel. All of those things are really important, and that's why YouTubers like me keep talking about it. So, push all the buttons, and until next time, drink adventurously, friends. I'm finishing this one after the shoot.